Howdy. There might be coming something or not. These are just two now. They are moving towards us. This is weather radar from windy 12 hours. It doesn't work. No, why? Now let's do it like that. So, I have been yesterday already showing you this I missed again. This conversion zone. Over the Eastern Sea. And double layering and such. And there is at the moment quite something going on in Central <coughs> Finland. Oulu region, like I said yesterday already. Let's zoom in. Oulu is here. Oulu region. <clears throat> but obviously there's also something going in, going on down here. Not too much yet, but this might change still. Let's have a quick look at the satellite. And for that we have to zoom out a bit. No, oh, that looks really interesting. There is happening quite some energy exchange. In this region. And if we talk about conversion zones, this means basically... Yeah, this looks really interesting. Look at that. Yeah, conversion zone. <clears throat> Let's draw quickly, but I'm I, I'm not a drawer or anything. Let's imagine this would be some atmospheric layers. One weather system and the other one, and they're moving towards themselves. And they have this own boundary where the weather system in a way stops. You know, the energy circuit, which makes the weather system. So in between, there is tough atmosphere. <laughs> so it, when they are pushing from either side, at one point, this in the middle starts to move either upwards, downwards or sideways. Because it has to go somewhere. And maybe also these are piling up here. So, let's have a look at this. This is the low pressure system, I guess. Which is changing a bit in position. Yeah, the cat just brought a squirrel. Are you kidding me? Check it out. Yeah. He brought a squirrel. What? How? Well, anyway. What was I... What was I talking about just before? No, anyway, here you can see it perfectly. It's really hard to find place without mosquitoes and visibility to the screen. So, as you look at this picture, this is spinning counterclockwise. And this is going upwards.
And there is now pushing from west a rather strong and big low pressure system. And now we have two low pressure systems here. This one moved a bit southwards, and this is moving wherever it's moving towards. This is called as oscillations. These are oscillations for those who know about Parkland currents, counter rotating features, and these kind of things. You probably understand what I'm talking about because weather is an electric phenomena, clouds are plasma. But if you don't understand what I mean about oscillations and Parkland currents, maybe we have to take a bigger picture in order to show what I mean. So now, let's go for it. National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center. This is available to uh, everyone. Not found. It's not actually... <laughs> not everything is available to everyone. 500 hectopascal height anomalies, northern hemisphere, CDS, 500 hectopascal, 80, an orange, whatever. I'm not a scientist, I don't understand all the things. But that's why I'm learning. So. This is Finland, yes. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Switzerland, you know where we are. So there's this red blob, which is dissipating. Yeah, you cannot stop this. But that's the most recent. Now we start at the beginning. So this red blob indicates that there is something really rather strong which was providing us this heat and dry air. But now since everything is moving it is oscillating and there is another one pushing here which gets now stronger because it connects differently to other. They are all connected together. Constantaneously. If you could watch this from the side there would be this kind of hoops and leaps between those, because they are connected, all of them, all the time. And obviously this is spinning, because it is a Birkeland current. <laughs> and sometimes it makes those, uh, they are reaching like polar air, like those cold snaps from the Arctic, now I remembered how they are called. They are these kind of diocotron instabilities. And if it is, in a way, a perfect Birkeland current, there will be six of them. Maybe you can, like, let's try if I can make a screenshot at the right moment, it's really hard because it's, it's not at real time screenshotting. It needs some time to think about. Now let's see if there's any possibility to, let's take that to draw. Okay. Now it's not the perfect, there's one, two, three, or five, or six, actually. Yeah, it's not the perfect one, but it's nature, it's moving. So, there was news today, again, about weather in Finland. There has been some lightning. I was thinking about making a video about this, but I don't. There's upwards lightning and these kind of things. Maybe I put a link below, you can watch it by yourself, but... Let's go to the other news. These are the original screenshots. Obviously it's Finnish, so no one understands. <laughs> I took screenshots of the whole article, 
And then I put Google to work and made it translate for me in English. Yeah, that's actually the last one. I guess so. That's the first one. The severe thunderstorms are expected in these areas. A strange change of weather in the evening. A strange change of weather in the evening. There has been enough rain in the morning, especially in Pohyo Savo. On Wednesday, only a few areas in Finland will be spared from rain. There have been plenty of morning showers, especially in the central parts of the country. By 7 o'clock, the heaviest amounts of rain were measured in Pohyo Savo, where, for example, 20 meters per hour was measured in the municipality of Vesanto. According to Nina Karusto, meteorologist on duty at the Finnish Meteorological Institute on Wednesday, it can easily rain 15 meters per hour in many places. The rains extended from the southwestern parts of the country to the northeast in urban areas. Such an amount can cause flooding. Which is why the Finnish Meteorological Institute has issued a rain warning for almost all of Finland. Yeah. And I'm trying to stay in the shadow, because in the shadow are mosquitoes. Hence, the sun is shining really hot. Aurinko porotta. The potential for heavy rain is lower than yesterday, but rain and thunderstorms are now spreading over a wider area than Tuesday. <coughs> Warnings of severe thunderstorms are valid in Rovaniemi, Pudas, Jarvi, Kainu, Pohjo, Savo, Pohjo, Skarela from the afternoon. The heaviest downpours are located in eastern Lapland. Where it may rain up to 30 millimeters in an hour. Utsjoki, Inari, Sotankyla, Pelkosen, Niemi, Savukoski, ja Salla have been issued a warning of dangerous rain starting in the afternoon. According to Karusto, Poutaisinta, Poutaisinta means mm, not raining. It can be cloudy, but it's not raining or snowing. Is the southeastern parts of Finland. Yeah, sun is shining. I, I do agree. The capital region in the western Lapland region also seems to remain on the border of the weather front. Meteorological Institute. The lightning balance of yesterday and last night in Finland is about 5,000. The new thunderstorms have already started in central Finland, the most active in terms of rain and thunderstorm is in the area marked red. The daily rainfall can rise to more than 50 millimeters in some places. Hashtag thunder. During the morning, a front of showers and thunderstorms moves towards western Finland and freezes there momentarily. Especially the direction of movement of the weather front will be especially fast. When a new low pressure arrives in Finland from the west in the Gulf of Pohjan, uh, this probably means Botnian Gulf, I don't know. At the same time, the low pressure that arrived from behind the eastern border at the beginning of the week is pulling south over Finland's border. According to Karusto, this causes the new low pressure to dominate and push the unstable weather front back towards the eastern border. This is now causing the back and forth movement of the weather front. Typically, only one low pressure would push in one direction. Mystery. Thunderstorms last night were the wildest this week so far. During the evening, thunderstorms unexpectedly came from behind the eastern border. 
Yeah, I said sometimes the surface conductivity anomaly and Kursk magnetic anomaly, they get overpowered and they can switch also some polarity. According to Karosto, Tuesday's lightning balance was about 4,600. Most ground lightning was recorded during the evening and night. This summer, apart from Tuesday, there have only been four such days when the ground chamber has been struck four to six thousand times. Yes, this was the peak reading of the summer, but the numbers could be clearly higher. Summer has been pretty quiet so far, yes. Because of the Kursk magnetic anomaly surface conductivity and their interaction with Earth's electromagnetic circuits, due to change in our planetary systems, weakening Earth's magnetosphere, migrating North Pole, magnetic North Pole, since it's moving and weakening and stuff is going on, those oscillations might differ to what we have experienced in the last, let's say, 400 years. So things might change, things are cramping up almost wherever you look. Earthquake, I should have made like, or I could have made many earthquake videos yesterday, today, two days ago, there's so much stuff going on, maybe I'll make one later about some interesting places, but let's see. I still wait for an answer from the, from the Finnish Meteorological Institute or people who work there because I provided them with some thoughts what I made about stuff I found and how they correlate with the things I observe either on windy or with my own eyes in the backyard just looking up to the sky. But anyway, it is interesting. There are so many mysteries like provided to the people as news. So many mysteries. Keeping alive the mysteries. Yeah. What to do? But it's at least windy, as you probably hear. If it wouldn't be windy, it would be really, really, really hot. But anyway, I leave it here. Thanks.